Welcome back to another FiTech Tech Tuesday. I'm Jeremy. I'm going to show you how to lock out a distributor and set up ignition timing control. The first step is to either have a new distributor or remove your distributor. We have to lock it out, which means we punch out this roll pin, slide the gear off. We'll take this out. We're going to flip this over. We remove the mechanical advanced springs and bushings and weights. We remove the nut that retains the shaft to the main plate. Flip it over, drop the shaft back into the smaller hole. Reinstall the retaining nut. Reinstall the gear. Make sure the bushings are in place. Be sure to check the height of the center tab on the rotor. It needs to be just high enough to make good contact with the carbon button on the distributor cap. On a phaseable rotor, the rotor tip needs to go in the advanced direction. On a small Chevy, that's this way. On a Ford, it's actually the opposite way. They spin the other way. But since this goes this way, I put it in this way. Use some Loctite on this screw. It needs to go about seven marks on here. That's about half the width of a rotor tip. Tighten it down, and that's all you need to do for distributor modifications. After installing the distributor in the engine, be sure to connect the two-wire distributor connector to our EFI system. This provides the reference point for our system to get a crank position from the distributor. We see that crank position, we calculate in advance and spark back to the coil and distributor. Make sure the coil output of the system is connected to the CDI points input or to the coil negative of your ignition coil with the other side being fed with a key power. If you're installing a new distributor, make sure the cam gear is compatible with your distributor gear. Make sure you use a little bit of assembly lube or engine oil. Make sure the gasket's in place. When you're setting it into the engine, make sure you engage the oil pump drive. The oil pump will be engaged when the base is able to go all the way in. Be sure to connect your two-wire connector to your throttle body. I've got the distributor base moved so that the cylinder number one post lines up with the rotor and the pickup lines up with one of the teeth on the distributor timing wheel. To set up the ignition timing control on the handheld, we need to turn the key on, go to initial setup, engine setup, and switch it to a two-wire input. Be sure to click OK and turn the key off. In order to get the ignition timing set close enough to run out of the box, I've positioned the engine at 13 degrees before top dead center. That's what the base timing is in the handheld. We do want to use the highest value possible here for good starting without kicking back and without having any knocking at high loads. The reason we do want the highest value here is so that when the distributor is sparking, we reduce the chance of any arc underneath the distributor cap. If this is too low and it has to try to go to say 40 degrees timing in the tables, we do need to set the actual distributor to be in the right position using a timing light. We do that by setting the lock timing to set value to locked and click OK. We do this while the engine is running and now the engine will actually try to get 30 degrees. You go to the front of the engine with a timing light, check the timing. If it's not 30 degrees, we move the distributor to get 30 degrees. This will allow this reference point to be correct. Once we get the 30 degrees on the balancer, we can unlock it or simply turn the key off. Another thing we may want to check with this locked is when we rev the engine to say 4,000 RPM, 
does the timing stay at 30 degrees? If it doesn't stay at 30 degrees, we can advance or retard the high RPMs so that it also reads 30 degrees. Typically, eight degrees is enough to compensate for standard distributors. So at cruising, we may actually want 40 degrees or more for the engine to have better fuel economy. At higher loads, a typical distributor curve can be used, say low 20s to mid to high 30s. If you're in boost with a power adder system such as this one, you want to use a lot less ignition timing. These timing values are the timing values that you should be seeing at the engine if everything is set properly and it's all referenced based off this 13 degree base timing. So if you set up the engine properly with the distributor timing, be sure if you change one number or two numbers, you actually go to each number to change it. As a quick recap, we've locked out the distributor, installed it, set up the ignition timing control, and actually adjusted the timing with a timing light. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. And thank you for joining us on this week's Tech Tuesday.